Innovation is today's topic on the Ask Limo You Show with my good friend Richard Furtag from Brilliant. Bill Faith and Richard Furtag here. We're at the LCT Leadership Summit on in Miami Beach, and there is a volleyball game going on behind us of operators, so don't worry about the grunts and the noises. All right, so let's just dive right in. Richard, you're my guest today. Thank you very much. We're down here in Thanks beautiful South me. Beach. Um, tell 30 seconds to 60 seconds. Tell my audience kind of your background uh, prior to getting into the limousine industry. Sure. I guess it was in 2009 or 2010? 2009 is when I actually got laid off and decided right. to become an entrepreneur. So Laid those, off from what? <laughs> yeah, so for those of you who don't know, I was um, a Wall Street executive. I was a hedge fund manager and I ran a $4 billion portfolio of institutional investments. And the only reason that that's relevant to this conversation, or at least where I think the conversation is going to go, is that um, when I lost my job as the world blew up, I decided to reinvent myself and become uh, an entrepreneur. And I set some parameters about what the opportunity set might look right. like. And I thought I wanted to do something that I could add real value, that I had a unique insight, um, and that I could self-fund. Because if you recall in 2010, there were no loans, banks were blowing up, and it was a crazy period of time, 2009 into 2010. And you probably know that better than most. Yeah, so anyway, I lost my job and I thought about what it is that I knew and what it is that I could fund and start on my own. And what I quickly realized was I traveled the world more than anybody I knew. Right. You know, like my passport had three or four inserts, it was about yay thick. Um, and everywhere I went, whether it was to see clients or investments, uh, I required ground transportation right. and so while the hotels were great and the meals were great and the expense account was wonderful and so on I always thought that ground transportation was yeah. sub everything else right. and that's where I started uh, in the transportation So that, space. that's why you you started Brilliant because you just kind of thought you could do it better and the the Not, industry was ripe for the taking. I, that's a bad. That's a bad terminology for me. I mean, you saw opportunity. There, well, that's right? just it. It's not that I thought I could do it better. Right. I thought that there was a segment of the population that was not being served at all, um, and that was people like myself that traveled in small groups. Um, so we would often take two or three sedans or two or three SUVs, right. and we'd be going to the same meeting. And I kind of thought, gee, that doesn't make a lot of sense. Maybe we should all be in the same vehicle together. Uh, talking about that investment or that client because if we spend an hour going from New York City to Greenwich when we get to Greenwich we're gonna have a much more important meaningful conversation right. than if like we're not and so uh, I started the business uh, focused primarily on the Mercedes Sprinter van and created what I would call a, a mobile office or a mobile boardroom uh, that tended to have a lot of comfort and luxury built in but that was sort of uh, secondary to the opportunity of creating a value uh, added time right. and working while you're in transit. So you mentioned Mercedes Sprinter, mobile office, you know, was pretty innovative in 2009. I don't want to say it's standard today, but it's right. more accepted by right. operators and they've implemented that. Um, but you didn't mention how many sedans and SUVs did you own? Uh, well, you know, we had zero sedans. We had a couple of SUVs which were reverse inquiry. Mm -hmm. A lot of our clients loved our business and how we handled them. And right, how right. We I don't them. mean to interrupt you, but yeah. let's hold on a second. You said you didn't own any sedans. What? Are you shitting me? How do you? How do you be? In, how are you in the limousine business without owning sedans? Explain that to me. Well, it's really straightforward. If you talk, if you think about what we started the conversation, I said I was adding value by offering something that didn't exist right. in the business. Last I checked, there was a shitload of sedans. Right. So what do I need sedans for, right? Like, what's the value add? Is my chauffeur gonna be more handsome, faster, safer? I mean, there's really good right. companies out there. And so what I was looking to do is offer a complimentary service, uh, unique to the industry, innovate, and, and not something that was copycat, or I'm gonna do it for less, or I'm gonna do it better. Like. That's really, really challenging. You know, right. there's tons of people. We're here at the LCT Summit. There's some world-class operators here who I bet will do a better job than I could ever do in the sedan right. space. So let's kind of move forward. Let's fast forward a few years. Okay. And you grew, you and I have known each other for about five or six, four or five years, um, off and on a little bit, but we really didn't get to understand each other until probably the last two weeks and right. really in the last 24 hours when we met here. And that's why I really wanted to have Richard on today's show. And this is going to be a lengthy one. This isn't your typical two or three minutes. It's probably going to end up being about 20 minutes long because I think Richard has a lot of value to add uh, to you guys as operators. So let's fast forward six years to okay. today. You've built a substantial business uh, without sedans, 
minimal amount of SUVs to service your events and really focused on shuttle buses, high-end equipment, right. um, you know, high-end sprinters. You've had offices in the New York City market, you've had offices in LA, you've serviced Las Vegas, but you've done it differently than that traditional model, which 45 seconds ago you said you did intentionally when you started, right? right. But what's really interesting to me is that Richard's in the middle of another pivot right now. Kind of explain to them what that pivot is and why sure. you're doing that. Yeah, um, look, I think the rate of innovation uh, has never been faster, right? So the, the changes that we're seeing, whether it's in the ground transportation space, electric vehicle space, hotels and Airbnb, you name it, the, the innovations that we're seeing are unbelievable in magnitude and unbelievable in speed. Right. And so as an entrepreneur, if you are operating at the historical pace of innovation, where things change over the course of, say, a generation or a decade, I think that's a big mistake. Right. So you need to adapt, or I need to adapt, and what we as a team are doing is adapting in real time to the opportunities that we see, and we're taking big risks to do that, right? It's not easy. It's like very challenging to, I, I had dinner with a friend the other night, I explained to him the sort of the pivot that we're going through, and he's like, I gotta tell you, I thought you were insane when you started your own company and became an entrepreneur leaving Wall Street. I think it's insane that you're basically changing your entire business model five, six years into this and now starting this other business model. Right. But I think you're insane if you're not doing that. Right. Because if you're not doing that, somebody else is doing it. To use, and, we both follow Gary V. Yeah. And he says it best. If you're not disrupting yourself, you're letting yourself be disrupted by your competition. I, I agree wholeheartedly. Now, let me clarify this. What Richard's doing, and I've done it in my business right now from IMA to Limo University and in other businesses previously, it's not for everybody. And we're, and we're not telling you what to do by any means. We're just sharing personal experience right now because right. I think that's valuable to learn from. You know. A few minutes ago, Richard said, I think you managed a $4 billion, with a B? Yes. $4 billion hedge fund. Right. Right? I've done 23 startups. A lot of those have failed, right? Not every one of them has been successful, but I have to imagine you've had some pretty incredible mentors to get you to the positions that you've been in. You haven't done this all on your own, right? And no. And you probably didn't learn everything in college. No. Um, I mean, I think college is uh, a great experience, mostly for networking and, and social purposes. I also had the benefit of um, getting an MBA at the Wharton School at University of Pennsylvania, which is really helpful in terms of finance. But to your point, we are humans. We are social beings. It's who you know, how you know them, right. the relationships that you build, how much trust they give you. You have to earn that, right? right. Like, I didn't just wake up one day and somebody said, here's four billion dollars, Richard, please go invest it. Over time, Martin. we started with a hundred million. Right. We grew it. I was the third or fourth person on that team. We grew to fifty plus people, and over that period of time, through the investments and the uh, relationships that we developed, uh, traveled all over the world to raise money. We got to about four billion dollars. And just to put that in perspective, when you're making allocations like that, a, an initial investment could be fifty, seventy-five, a hundred million dollars. Mm -hmm. So you have to have a lot of conviction in your investment thesis and that strength is what I sort of draw on when I'm right. looking at my own business and say, you know what, like, I got this. I feel pretty good about what I see as an opportunity right. and I'm willing to take that risk. Well, and I think you said something that's really paramount is you have to build trust. That's right. And it's what I call you have to give before you get, right? right. And I think there's a tremendous book, if, if you've ever heard of Chris Brogan before, yeah, sure. called Trust Agents. It's right. about six, seven, eight years ago, uh, old now. but. It's all about trust in our business, and I think that's something that operators that are watching this video can, they don't have to do what you're doing, but they can model what you're doing. But yeah. really, at the end of the day, you are truly a customer-focused business.